Hello and welcome to Art Laughs. I'm Verity Babs and today I spoke to Tanya Moore. Tanya, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thanks for asking me to talk about stuff I don't know about. I love this. <laughs> <laughs> it's a challenge. We love a challenge. <laughs> You, you've picked a painting for us today. Uh, can you briefly introduce that for us? Well, it's a painting that I always think about whenever, when anyone says, do you know art? It's the only art that I know. And it's Van Gogh's sunflower photo, picture, painting. <laughs> that lets you know how bad I am. <laughs> it's, all, it's always one of the three Ps. It's got to be one of the three Ps. Right? I painted it when I was in secondary school. But what I like about it, I really enjoy the colours of it and how it makes me feel when I look at it. And mm. I just think it's like it looks like a good day. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You know when you're like at 7pm on a sunny day and it's the sun's just going down, it's the type of heat that you want. That's what I get when I look at that photo. Picture painting! Painting! Where did you first come across it? Was it when you were doing this like exercise in school? Yeah, in secondary school, yeah. Mm. I was, I think I was year nine at that point, and I'm not an artist. It's just you get double art, and that means two hours of doing nothing instead of doing two sessions. So I wasn't complaining. What you really want to get for double art is you want to be doing the stuff with clay in double art because at least there's some form of getting involved. You get stuck in. There's also an element of like these could at any point be used as a weapon, <laughs> like right. There's I can make yeah. clubs to hit the boys over the head because boys are silly. We should throw rocks at them, all the stuff. Would you say that school was basically like, that was the introduction to art for you? Or is that something that has carried on for you? Is this very much a like, this might be the first time you ever have to like think or speak about art since then? <laughs> oh, totally the latter. Yeah. <laughs> it's the best. First time I'm talking about art since school, mm. um, I, that was my, do you know what, I, I think, I don't know if I liked art, I think I more liked my art teacher. That's what will do it. Do you know? Mm. She was everything. She was an, a, a clog wearing, she had on the, the, the loose um, dungarees, messy mm. hair, paint was always somewhere on her face it was just and she didn't care she was just like whatever in it who cares i don't care there's something about art teachers where they're very like of all like you know that they're one of the teachers so they're one of the system and yet there's something slightly like anti-authoritarian about them like i relate to you though do you know i mean like i was like but i relate to the rebel like everyone else all the other teachers are like in suits and you're like fuck it i'm an art teacher Mm. i'll wear what i want and I relate to that. <laughs> Our teacher would always have, like the art class would be always where you took the kids who've been kicked out of other classes to. And I get it in like, hypothetically, there's this idea of very like dead poet society of this like badly behaved child that's going to be taken and they're going to draw, yeah. an, they're going to draw an apple and then suddenly they're going to be like enlightened. But that seems to be what they were going for. Right. And she really <laughs> helped me because I was on... On, on course to get in um, an F <laughs> and she was like listen if you do these things I can help bump up your grades and so I just sat in class during breaks lunch and breaks did all this list of things and I got a C. Smashed it. I mean she told me to build a sculpture so she, she said pick a picture I picked a picture of it was like a sea with a, a palm tree and a beach and all that kind of stuff. Mm. She's like, pick something in that picture and I want you to build it. So I picked the palm tree. She said, right, when you come in tomorrow, I want to see a palm tree. So I went home and I got one of my little sister's old shoes and I just started making this palm tree. So I painted the bottom brown and just started getting like brown pa- pieces of um, paper. You know, when you get the scissors and you do that and it curls over. Yeah. And I started doing that and I put it all together and I went in the next day. She was like, fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> definitely the teacher why I liked art. It's definitely her. <laughs> I'm just trying to think like, is there any subject where if the teacher, like it's quite hard to resist the draw of a very good teacher in whatever whatever it is and yeah. or it's difficult for that to like overcome your like natural tendencies towards things I think that you could have a terrible maths teacher but if you're inherently a bit mathsy 
it wouldn't matter but for other stuff where you do you do need someone to like encourage you to do it i think even if you think you're quite creative if you have a terrible art teacher i think that can kind of like kick it out of you it can make you hate the whole thing altogether because i loved pe and Mm. i didn't like my pe teacher but we had two PE teachers, so they would alternate. So there'd be a day where I really loved PE and a day where I was like, oh, God. Had there been two teachers you liked, I'd be right now interviewing an Olympian. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> That's the thing. I'd be like the, big, the best sprinter. My thing was 100 metres in relay. Nice. You know, at school, if, if PE was sort of your thing, and now obviously so much of your work revolves around words, was... English something that sort of appealed to you more than art necessarily? Oh, English was my favourite. Mm-hmm. Absolute favourite subject. Both the subject and the teacher. And like Even now, today, I still remember things that she would say to me in my head, right? Mm-hmm. Um, for example, one thing that's carried with me for my whole life is people who are smart and know English and know their words don't fight because they can talk themselves out of any situation. And that was so poignant to me. I'll never forget that day. Wow. I've never had a fight in my life, even up to that point, but I've never had one since. <laughs> I'm Think- saying that's the reason. It doesn't matter that I can't do a press up. That's <laughs> the reason. <laughs> the thing of whenever we, like, in these videos speak about, you know, really impactful teachers, I always want to do that, like, that this is your life thing and go, and they're here in my living yes. room <laughs> waiting. <laughs> right? That would be awesome. I'll tell you a fun fact. I messaged my first drama teacher, the one who gave me the you can do this, don't give up moment that I've carried my whole life whenever I feel like, oh, I can't do anything. Then I'd be like, no, Mr. Stone said you can do it. You fucking do it. Yeah. My mum was very much like entertaining me going on stage, but Mm. she was still like, but you're going to be a lawyer. Right? Right? Right. (laughs) So he was like, no, don't make her be a lawyer. Stay on there. She's going to be really good if you give her the support she needs right mm. so i messaged him i found him on facebook i messaged him and i was like oh my god it's like you really inspired me this is going really well you know this this is what's happening in my life now um and i just wanted to say thank you and he was like oh thanks for your message good luck in your life <laughs> that's that is the thing that is the thing of when when you think that you know, a teacher's had this massive like seismic impact on you and then you meet them or message them afterwards, you realise they don't give a shit. <laughs> like, At all. I, I was doing, a, doing an improv gig and a, a, my drama teacher was there with like her kids. And I went up to her and I was like, oh my God, wait until she sees me. She's going to take one look at me and she's going to burst into tears. And um, I said, oh, hi, um, hi, Miss Jackson, it's Verity. Um, I used to be in... Uh, 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 you know, we, we, you taught me, and she went, "Oh, that's great!" And <laughs> honestly, I've had nicer breakups. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yes, that really there cut me. Who used to be in my life, who hate me, who wish more for me than this man? Yeah, <laughs> it, and, and then I, and then I had to do this gig, but I was so like deflated, and then I was like, "I'm going to prove to her that you know." <laughs> Proper emotional crisis on stage. <laughs> Nonsense, literally. <laughs> you go through. I mean, it's testament to how good of teachers they were because they left an impact, right? Mm. But like, they might have stopped teaching and been like, right, fuck that life, I'm moving on. And here yeah, we done. come. Hi, how you doing? <laughs> yeah, because because like we are the center of their world as far as we're concerned when we're <laughs> when we're doing it. And that's and every now and again, where I get like a crisis of confidence about like oh, you know, is what I'm doing any good? I think, you know, and I'm such a praise-driven person. I'm like, I could become one of the cool teachers and then just have, like, every year, 200 more people to to praise me. <laughs> right, right. I'm like, I've left their life now. Their, their days must be boring. <laughs> yeah, it's very, it's very much that whole thing of, like, kids think that teachers sleep at school and when you see them in boots, it's like, oh, my God. What are you doing here, you alien? Yeah, totally. Yeah, not into <laughs> I'm going to take us briefly back to the sunflowers. Is visiting galleries, interacting with with art, something that you do much of? Like for a lot of people, it's a quite a holiday act- activity. It's quite like, well, we've gone to France. So you go and you go and have dinner and you go to a gallery and you go on a boat. I would say 
I don't seek them out myself. Mm. But if somebody invites me or if I'm taken there, then I'm having interest because it's all, it is always interesting, especially mm. for subjects that you don't know anything about, really. You're always just going to learn, aren't you? So it's not something that I'd be like, hmm, I'm going to go to a gallery or there's a new gallery that's opened. I must check it out. Never. But mm. if someone says, can I'm going here? Do you want to come? Yeah, why not? I think with, with galleries, it, that often has to be the case because like there are so many or like, there, yes. is so, there is so much art that people continue to make it all the time. Um, yes. that despite there being so much that you couldn't possibly like tick everything off, which I guess is slightly different to other activities where i don't know like this is the football game your team is playing today someone took me on a date to a museum once and i just was like i'm convinced this means you don't like me we can't even talk in here <laughs> <laughs> What's the point, sir? <laughs> would you like to go on a date with me and and not speak and ideally make little eye contact <laughs> Ideally, let's just stay in our own minds thinking about stuff that we're, that has nothing to do with me and you. <laughs> That's the thing of it sounds like on paper, very romantic and very like you go around and you talk about your feelings and it shows that they are, you know, sensitive and emotional. But actually it just shows that they don't want to, they just do not want to make, make small talk. No, at all. You feel very uncomfortable. And now I'm like, why did you ask? I guess it's like dates to the, dates to the cinema. It's like either like the only reason you can go on a date to a cinema is to not speak and possibly do some like fumbling <laughs> in the dark right? i'm like if we're not in a relationship i think a date in a cinema is pointless mm. because we're in the get to know you stage and i can't get to know you by not looking at you or talking to you by just sitting next to you and eating popcorn i'm not going to learn anything outside mm. of he chooses his mouth open or he doesn't that's not yeah. really good information. It's like a film trope, isn't it? Like you'll go to the cinema and you're going to watch something like a horror film and he's going to protect you and it's going to... And, and he's going to put his hand around you and you're going to be yeah. like, ah! And he's going to be a hero. I was 13 on a, on a date to the cinema with my, my very first boyfriend. It was very exciting. And we went and saw the last Harry Potter film, which... Oh. But, but I hadn't seen any of the Harry Potter films, but we were going to go and our, some of our friends were there and I'd heard that this was going to be when I was going to get my first kiss. It was all in the air. We, it, there was gossip. It was very exciting. And so I'm sat there with, <laughs> with, uh, I'm sat there with this like, bless him, very lovely, very like shy 13 year old boy. And obviously I'm like, <laughs> I'm like gagging for it. <laughs> and and I'm like, this is the moment, this is the moment. And I say to him, I say, you know, I can't remember. I must have something really, you know, like, would you like to kiss me? And he says, let's wait until Dobby dies. <laughs> so, so I spend the rest of this film waiting for Dobby to waiting die. Waiting for Dobby to die so you can have a kiss? Yeah. And a then, kiss at a funeral, sir? And, that, and that's, a, that's a formative experience. That will stick wow. with me. So I, I can't yeah. look. I can't look at Dobby now without being aroused. <laughs> I mean, did you enter a relationship with the funeral kisser? In as much as you can when you're 13, you know there was. Um, yeah, yeah. You held hands a couple of times. Yeah, it's the thing of um, what's it called? That there's that Instagram account that's called Beam Me Up Soft Boy, which is all of these. Oh, it's so good. But I'll share some on the screen. But it's all like the idea of a soft boy being a fuck boy who is really in touch with his emotions so they're still gonna act like a get fuck out of here yeah they're still gonna act like a fuck boy but they'll say you know the reason why they've left you on like left you on red for days is because they you know they were just getting too involved listening to the smiths they didn't have the emotional capacity to uh, message you back but then they will immediately ask you for nudes um but that is the, that's the sense of the kind of guy who'd be like let's go uh, go to an art gallery for our first day you know completely <laughs> completely <laughs> Com nail on head yes that i like that i'm gonna look into that yeah some of the people saying like they're the they're the dangerous ones <laughs> because at least with the fuck boy you can sort of tell and, they, and, and they'll be like guy guys who straight up yes. be like you don't want to date me i'm an asshole whereas soft boys are like you don't want to date me i'm a terrible and then you have to engage with that yeah well, they know that the delivery of I'm terrible is straight away your intrigue is like, oh, how terrible. Yeah. And then you go in. That's normally what happens. It just intrigues you. 
Bob the Builder, you get your kit out ready to fix them and off you go. Just straight in and get the job done. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're, you're sat there watching a three hour long film waiting for Dobby to die. And, and then you've got to re- really yes. rethink, rethink your life choices. <laughs> and when Dobby died, was it worth the wait? Oh, as much as it could be when you're like 13. <laughs> so like, <laughs> like in hindsight, no, probably at the time, best moment of my life. <laughs> yeah, of course. yeah, yeah, because it's your first kiss. And so well, what was your first, first kiss, Tanya? <laughs> it was on the last day of primary school. And I had the same boyfriend for the last two years. And in that is that every Friday when we had talk, he gave me talk money. And he would walk me halfway home. Only Aww. because he lived in the other direction. That's so not that's such a like <laughs> lovely, respectable relationship. <laughs> I know, I know he cheated on me. Oh. With a girl at play team, I found out. Slag. Right? Like not me being cheated on in primary school. This is insane. Anyway, so um I remember because I got a letter from his best friend saying that he's cheating on you with a girl at primary at, at play scheme and you you're at school and she's at play scheme and he's got two girlfriends and I was like, Look at the fucking scandal. It was a big deal. It was a big deal. We, we it was me and him and then his best friend and my best friend, they were in a relationship and we said, Let's go and have our first kisses and we went to the back of these garages and then um we were like one we're supposed to kiss on three but i ran in on two i did too early so he wasn't ready and i went into the face and that was it i didn't go back i didn't rectify it i just said that that was it that'll do a lot of primary school and secondary school like gossip was communicated through letters written by other people that's a thing that you know kids kids these days won't have that you'll just you'll just um you'll just dm people but a lot of handwritten notes to but boy, boyfriends of my friends saying, you know, actually, Jessica's really cross with you. And then they'd have to then ask me, you know, why is she crossing yeah. me? And I'd send another letter and be like, if you can't work it out, then. <laughs> That's how I became, I got my first letter from him, that guy. And he said, I read, it was a, it was a four sheet, both sides filled, filled, <sighs> filled. And Intense. I read, dear Tanya will you be my girlfriend because I want to be your boyfriend? Then I turned it over and I was like, who's this from? And it said, love from F.A. And I screwed it up and I threw it in the bin. Nah, I wish I'd read it because being in the stand-up, that would have been great material. But mm. I didn't. I just threw it in the bin. So we'll never know what two sides of A4 meant to somebody who was nine. <laughs> that's, and that's a lot. That's like a novel. That's like a novel to him. It's a novel for me to read. I'm nine. <laughs> <laughs> My books have a lot more, a lot less words in them at present. Thank you. <laughs> more pictures. More pictures. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tanya, thank you so much for coming and speaking to me today. Where is the best place we can follow you, keep up with what you're doing? Um, my social media is all my name, Tanya Moore. And my website is tanyamore.co.uk. You can get uh, monthly updates on uh, things that I'm doing behind the scenes, what I'm filming, what's coming up. You can get uh, dates for live stand-up and things like that. So just follow and come and enjoy the rides. It's crazy. You can follow Tanya in the ways written below. As per usual, you can follow me at Verity Babs Art on Instagram. Please do give this channel a subscribe and this video a like, and I will see you next time.